All right, so we are back here at the All In One Studios, the All In Podcast here in Franklin, Tennessee, uh, just outside Nashville, about 20 miles south. Actually, not even that, about 12 miles south. Cold day here, uh, and I've got an amazing guest, somebody I've been really excited about having on. I've gotten to know this past year. Um, Michael Gomez is who we've got today. Michael is a broker and owner of Hive Nashville, uh, real estate brokerage here in town. Uh, did not start that so long ago, and they're already crushing it. He's also a partner with Ram Property Management and Nashville Renovators. Uh, he spent years building his business to cater specifically to investors, and during that time, Michael really participated in almost every aspect of the real estate music, or the real estate industry imaginable. So uh, he is an investor himself. We're going to talk about that. He has personally owned and flipped, uh, rented, and developed real estate across the southern U.S., and due to the incredible success of the market, he and his wife, Amy, were featured uh, as one of the three teams on HGTV's Flipping Showdown. Michael provides real estate broker expertise and insight to help their business meet the needs of their clients. Michael also assists their clients in evaluating property values, um, selling investment properties, buying new ones that to meet his clients' investment criteria. They He resides in the Middle Tennessee area with his wife, Amy, who's amazing, and uh, their three children. And Michael, welcome, brother. Oh, thank you, you so see, much. Good to see you, man. For friend. having me. Um, I'm a big fan. No, I okay. feel like you put out so uh, so much great content. You know, it's like there's a difference, in my opinion, to just like uploading content like nonstop, 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 just because – we feel like we have to have content, but mm-hmm. you actually put good, good content. Thank you. Every time I see your videos, I take something good out of it. A lot of times I forward it to some of my agents. And uh, yeah, I'm blessed to uh, start uh, knowing you a few months back. I feel like we're all friends now. So mm-hmm. you awesome. and Morella, just like, I, I consider you family now. Yeah, <laughs> we see each other at the beach now. All you know, the time, 30, all the time. Down on 30A, That's which right. is uh, the place to go, as everyone knows around here. But, dude, you just got back from Dominican. Yes. Uh, that's where that's where you're from. That's, that's mm-hmm. where you were born. Born and raised. Born and raised. Uh, so talk about this before we get into what you just got back, because that's exciting. I, talk a little bit about kind of just, you know, Dominican, growing up in the Dominican, you know, and what that was like. Growing up in Dominican was awesome. I, um, I always say that I not necessarily wish that I had the story where you're like, you know, making all this money saying, hey, I'm, I'm doing this because I want to give my kids a better childhood than I had. I had an amazing childhood. My mom, my dad, we lived in a beautiful uh, middle class like home over there, had many friends. Uh, my father did pass away from cancer when I was eight, and, oh, wow. and that was very sad. Mm. Uh, but my mom, who's a medical doctor and just like a, you know, a boss lady, mm. um, just you know, took care of, of me and my brother and my sister. And, and she used to say, hey, if you guys want to learn something, if I don't have the money, I'll borrow it. So I'm communicating with you in English right now mm. because my mom put me in English school when I was little and French and guitar and whatever I wanted to like learn. Right. And so my brother and my sister too. So my mom's awesome. She's still here with us and she lives now here with us in Tennessee. So she doesn't have to miss us. And she's almost 80 and Last month, she wanted to go to Portugal and Spain, and she went to Portugal and Spain. Yeah. You know, last year for her birthday, she's like, well, I'm like, Ma, what, what do you want to do for her birth- for your birthday? She's like, take me to Vegas. <laughs> so I took mom to Vegas, you know? Right, so, right. so she's reaping what she's sown, and we're so happy to to have her here. But I lived a really good life in the Dominican. Um, I don't, don't have... Uh, a story that that many of my friends have of hardships and things like that. I went to, you know, private schools mm-hmm. and and had a lot, a lot of friends and I played music and um, eventually um, I got a college degree out there in hotel administration and tourism and because uh, you know the Dominican tourism is the big thing and yeah. and, and and I enjoyed I enjoyed enjoyed that atmosphere and I, I thought that was going to be my life but I like music even more so I remember when I got my college degree I straight up looked at my mom and I said mom here you go and yeah. she said okay you have fulfilled your duties <laughs> now you are released to do. Anything you want in the world, because now my son has a college degree. Right, right. <laughs> and that I did. Right. I uh, I met a guy from Maine uh, who was an amazing singer while I was in the Dominican, and he said, "Hey, you want to come to Maine and, and play guitar and maybe start a little band or something?" And at the time, I was 24. It seemed like a great idea. Yeah. Um, and uh, I was also 
I had just become a Christian a few months before that. So I was just kind of trying to find, finding myself, finding what God had for me, his purpose and things mm -hmm. like that. And I, uh, I came here and I moved to Maine and it was in the summer or the summer, how they say that <laughs> summer day, I tell you what, <laughs> and it was very nice. And then, uh, I remember I woke up one day and I saw something that I'd never seen before. The whole ground was like covered with this like ice. And I remember asking my friend's like father, his name is Bruce, like, hey, Bruce, what's that? He's like, well, Mike, that, that's the frost and it's coming to get you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and then from there, it started snowing and it didn't stop for like months. And I remember calling the snow, my, my nickname for snow is the devil's dandruff. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty from inside the house. But um, so anyways, moved to Maine and we started playing music out there. To make the story short, we created this band called Unspoken, sure. uh, contemporary Christian band, and we would go everywhere, just him and I, in a big Cadillac that that we bought from his grandfather, and we would go anywhere that would give us the chance to play music, money or no money, and and uh, it was great. Eventually, moved to Philadelphia, where a family took us in, and uh, they were also really good to me because they had a nonprofit and they uh, helped me get my tourist visa that I had they helped me get a religious worker visa. Okay. So I was able to stay and legally work and make money here in the U.S. without having to go back to the Dominican, coming back and back and forth and things like that. So very thankful for that family that took us in for a couple of years and, uh, and enabled us to continue to do our ministry back then. Um, from there, our band eventually got kind of good and we got a record yeah, deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we actually got a record deal. And um, after we, uh, we moved to Nashville with, with uh, uh, like a pre-record deal that actually didn't work out. Okay. And after a year, but it was great because we're like, hey, we're you know we're not getting any younger. We let's move to Nashville and let's learn how to write songs and stuff. So, moved to Nashville, got a, then eventually got a real record deal with Centricity. It's a wonderful uh, record label. Uh, yeah, everything that I have to say about them uh, doesn't even do justice. They're like, they're, they. That, I, re that, I remember a, that's not always the case, right? No, we, as it, we as people that we mm -hmm. and I, you and I know. Yeah. In the I, music industry, it can be. It can go. It can go sideways. Yeah, I remember them saying, "Hey, we're gonna try with you guys, and if the, if it doesn't work, we'll continue to try until one of us like said, hey, 'Hey, we've tried everything, and then mm. nothing stuck or whatever.' But we had a really good single, and became a number one. Uh, and then from there, we had a really good career, real estate now, in the, not in real estate, in music. But um, you know, as as People may know you could have a number one and still be dirt poor. Yeah. So I remember I was with the band. We had songs on the radio. We're already starting to tour and I'm making a thousand dollars a month. And I'm sharing a house with two, with my wife, Amy, and I'm sharing the house with two bandmates, which is like, you know, normally what you do, you know? So remember their rent was 1200 bucks in Spring Hill, brand new house built by John Mayer, not the guitar player, just, just with an H, <laughs> right. it's like John Mayer. And it was a house that he had built that nobody bought. This is like 2009, you know, to the, right after the crash. Yeah. So he had built a bunch of new houses and the houses were sitting there. So we rented through Craigslist a brand new house that nobody had lived in for $1,200. So, so they had to pay 600 bucks. And, and Amy and I had to pay 600 bucks. And we rented this really nice house in Spring Hill. It was, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful brand new construction. And then um, I remember slowly seeing that the for sale signs starting to go. And I'm like, oh, m must be something going on with the real estate market. But I'm going to tell you how I got into real estate. Okay. This is really funny. <laughs> Making a thousand bucks a week and now, a month. And now we want to start a family. And I remember saying, man, thousand bucks a month, that's rough. Amy was working for a nonprofit. So she's barely making any money too, yeah. you know, she's missions director, you know. And, and so I was watching TV one day and I've seen this show of, of this dude selling real estate in LA, like, you know, million dollar listing or right. whatever. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I bet I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I just laughed it off, but, uh, the, but then I started digging and I went to, I remember I walked into a Keller Williams office in Spring Hill and I, and I asked to talk to the person in charge, the team leader. And, and I said, Hey, I have a couple of questions for you. Number one, people that do real estate, do they have to come to an office every day? And she said, no. Nope. As a matter of fact, some people that, you know, never even come to the office. And that was obviously important. Right. Very important because I still wanted to do music. So number two, people, do people make money doing this like part time? Right. And she said, well, as a matter of fact, some people that do it part time 
make more money than the people that do it full time. She's like, right. I don't know how to explain it. It's like has to do with your personality and your level of hustle. But like, right. it doesn't. It's not something that is gonna be. If you put in this amount of hours, you're gonna do better than the one that puts less hours. It's just right. not how it is. I said, okay. So how much does this cost? And she said, well, it's gonna be about fifteen hundred bucks between all this stuff. And I'm like, mm -hmm. scratching my head. I did not have fifteen hundred dollars right. to my name right. back then. So. I remember what you do. Well, I didn't want to call my mom because I was like, you know, I've always been kind of independent, you know, yeah. and proud a little bit in that sense. So I called a really good friend of mine who's a medical doctor in New York City that we grew up together. And so it was really be being really kind to me. And I said, hey, can you lend me fifteen hundred dollars so I can go to real estate school and I will pay you within the first year? or when I sell my first house. And he said, I tell you what, I'm gonna lend you the money and you don't have to worry about paying it to me the first year. Like, you're gonna do so good at this that when you start building your own house of, of all the money you're gonna make in real estate, you can pay me then. And he sent me the money, I said, all right. But I did pay him within a year because I sold my first house. I think I think it took me six months to sell my first house in real estate. Right. And, uh, but that's normal, right? I mean, because do people, a lot of people get into it thinking they're just gonna sell a house immediately. Oh, it's, it's, I, I tell I mean, new you, agents, you, you, have, like, you have agents now. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, listen, like, don't quit your day job. Right. Like, it's just like, you know, uh, I have mixed feelings because I think that when you have no plan B and all you have is real estate, I think you do have a better chance of like thriving because you have to make it work. See, in my in mm. my case, I was making music, you know, a thousand bucks a month mm -hmm. and all this stuff, but like, I had to make this work. I had no option. I was gonna do the real estate. And I remember I said, I'm gonna walk into that office. I'm gonna find whoever is the busiest agent here. Right. And I'm gonna say, my name's Michael Gomez. I just got my license. I don't know if you have agents working with you, but I'm gonna work harder than any agent that you have. Give me a shot, give me some of your leads. Right. Cause I, I'm, I'm new, I barely know anybody here. And I'm gonna work that to death. Like what you got? And right. I got hired right. by a busy, right. with the busiest agent in, in that in that office, right. and he hated to work with buyers. So I started working with buyers. And back then, all we had was foreclosure. So I cut my teeth selling hot homes, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac short sales as a new agent. Right. And I became really good. And then, of course, by default, I pick up a few investors. And then I started. So about when is that roughly? Two thousand. By then, it's two thousand eleven. Okay. Because I remember my son was born the same month that I became an American citizen, and I also got my real estate license okay. that year. So it was really cool, really cool month, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so I got really good. I remember, even though I remember, you know, my the agent that I worked for, he was getting fifty five percent of my commission. And Keller Williams was taking 30% of my commission. And Uncle Sam was taking 30% of right. that. Still, I remember one month that I had four closings and that dude, get, Keller Williams gave me a check for $10,000. Yeah. I mean, remember, like, dude, I, I've never seen that much I've money my whole life. I was like, Right, thousand dollars, and I've always been good, good with money. I've never been like uh, I've always lived, you know, like according to my means. I've never been a big spender. Yeah. I, actually, I was never even in debt until I got married. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, I always had money. Maybe not much, but I was never like in, in a mm. car debt or anything. Yeah. I never, you know, Hispanic culture. We wanna, we don't want debt. Uh, as a matter yeah. of fact, like I, it's just like it, it's we just want to have everything paid off and yeah. we don't want to have, cause we, we assimilate like uh debt with like slavery, you know, mm -hmm. you, you owe somebody, you're a slave to that. So like, you know, of course you, you know, as you learn and educate yourself, you break those, those paradigms, you know, and yeah. you understand that there's things that's good debt, good debt. you know, like, you know, mortgages too. I'll, I'll right. I wish I would owe, you know, millions of dollars in, in real estate because that probably means I have even more inequity right. and all those things, you know? So, but that's so, yeah, that's a tough one. But, uh, yeah, it's for some people to get. They, I mean, there's this rumor out there, this thing, like if you own if you own property, but you owe money on it, like you don't really own it or because, you know, that's, I don't understand that mentality because, I mean, I know so many people that have cash flow. But going back to your, your roots, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you grew up in the Dominican, your father yeah. passes away and you're eight. But what's one thing that you said that uh, stuck with me that really I think has has pulled through in your life is this idea that your mom said, you know, if you want to do something, let me know, because her mindset was investing in yourself. Oh, yeah. in, in so many ways, that's mm -hmm. what you said because she believed like in, investing in yourself. She was she went to med school, she became a doctor, so she realized mm -hmm. that you know you grow up middle class in mm -hmm. in, in the Dominican, and 
and you decide you're going to invest in yourself. You start doing things. Yeah. And so uh, the way I experience you is that's you kind of get in there and, and learn. You want to you're a learner. Oh, remember, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. First of all, you know, being Dominican, I was the worst baseball player that ever existed. <laughs> I was so bad at baseball. I mean, all my friends were like, woo, right. woo, and I'm like, you know, <laughs> right, to, right. you know, and so I decided to play guitar instead. And that's, and my mom helped me. I, I started getting classes and, and, and in, a, in a way I'm here now because my mom put uh -huh. me in guitar lessons. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Like little decisions that we make. It's like, had I not be playing guitar when I met Chad, the singer from Spoken, I would have been just like, Hey, nice to meet you. And right. that's it. But my whole destiny changed, you know, in a sense, because my mom, I told my mom I wanted to become, be a guitar player and she got me into it. And also my mom did something really, really dangerous. Um, she told me that it was free to dream and that I could just dream, that I could just do anything, that you could just dream it and all that stuff. And it's weird because my mom, she's not a mm. pessimist. She's definitely a realist. Mm -hmm. So, so she herself is not like that. But she taught me that. And every now and then, you know, when she sees me that I've gone so far, I remember one time with the band, she's asking me, you know, okay, you live in the United States now. That's great. Well, so, so, uh, how do you make money out there? And I'm like, ma, we, we, you know, I'm, I'm in a Christian band and we live by faith. And and uh, she's like, well, tell me more. What, what is that? It's like, well, you know, we play at a church and you know they give us a love offering. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, how much do they love you? She's like, what? <laughs> If they don't love you right? <laughs> i'm like ma it's okay so like you know i i uh you know i did live in people's the first two years that i was in the united states i didn't even own my own bed i i worked as a landscaper sometimes 12 hour days laying sod in maine yeah and it was very hard hard labor i never did hard labor in the dominican i was like hard labor right. well, well let's call somebody to do that you know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so it was pretty pretty good to go through through those things i always quote the very wise miley cyrus she said you and I quote, it's the climb. It's the climb. That's it. It's the climb. That's the wise words right there. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it is true because it, I mean, it had to have, it had to play a part in your real estate uh, with knowing that, okay, I, I take guitar lessons and then fast forward and now I'm playing on stages and we have a record deal mm -hmm. in America. Yeah. And so once you, you know, you're stacking wins, once you start stacking wins, you, you had to, that had to play into like, I think I can you know, improve my confidence and now I can maybe do something else. The next thing, which was, I will estate. say this, maybe because I'm an immigrant, but with all certainty, I can tell you, this is the best country in the whole world. Mm -hmm. The opportunities that you have here in this country, and maybe it's hard for people that are born and raised here mm -hmm. sometimes to see it because, well, it's already been here. You mm -hmm. grew up seeing, but like as an immigrant, I come, I came here and it was like opportunity, 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 opportunity. Like I can name you a couple of businesses right now. Okay, I'm gonna give you one. You know, because I'm a serial, I, I, build, I do businesses now. Mm -hmm. You know, besides, um, I might be doing an insurance company now. Mm -hmm. You know, I have property mm -hmm. management. You know, working with a title company. Of course, I have the brokerage. You know, uh, all kinds of things. So the other day, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, you know, my, my sneakers get dirty often, and I said, why isn't there a kiosk and at the mall that you just come in and you bring your sneakers and they in, in like five minutes, right. you know, they're clean now. So like a sneaker cleaning business yeah. or mobile, or, you, or they, they yeah. even go to your house and you charge 20, 25 bucks per sneaker. And before you know it, you have a bit, I started Googling. There's not one here. So can somebody please make a business where you go to people's houses or they drop, or, or you, or you could like pick them up or whatever. And then you clean like they're their like a dry cleaners, but for shoes. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's a business right there. And some, there if somebody go. would have the time, they just go ahead and, and do it. And if they do it well. Somebody's writing business, that down. Well, how about there. this? They do it and now they start franchising. Yeah. Okay. And now they, they have $2 million business. Yeah. You know, because they're premier. Thing. People don't want to. Some people don't have. You know what? I don't have the time to clean my shoes right now. Yeah. You know, if I have the time, I'd probably do it. But it's like I'm trying to get 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 Liam, my 11 year old. I'm like, hey, bro, you know, chores. You're going to because I used to clean the shoes of everybody in my house on Saturdays. And we were, we would rotate that. It'd be okay. my my brother, myself, really? my sister. Yeah. yeah. But we would all get all the shoes of my whole household. And my grandfather had built us a shoe box and we had all the all the things there. And we would have to do us part of chores. 
and you, cl you clean yeah. everybody's shoes in the house. So you already kind of grew up with this kind of like ethic of right. like clean shoes. Yeah, you, know, you clean shoes, you work or whatever. So, anyways, that was that was my my idea. And if you do that in another country like the Dominican, that mo most likely is not going to work. First of all, people don't have extra money to be paying like like somebody to like clean, sho clean, clean shoes. shoes. But here, I know a lot of my friends that that would you probably pay. You probably yeah, just right, drop right, them off and, right. and then brand new. They bring in, you know, I'm telling you. So you know, there's so many opportunities here in this country and. And if you do something, a mobile car wash, I mean, there's some people charging three, 400 bucks. They go to your house, right. clean your car. Right. I mean, come on. Right. You know, I, I just submitted an offer for a lady. She cleans Airbnbs. And you guess what she's buying today? Because I know the offer is going to get accepted. Her very own Airbnb in Kingston Springs, hmm. 550K. You know, and this lady's got a cleaning company. Right. And this is not even her first home. Ask her if she can do that back in her country. I don't think so. Right. This is the best right. country in the world. You still like to go back though. Right? I love to go you back. You just got back. I so what'd you do? Tell us what tell us what you did. So um when I go to Dominican, I wanted to start investing in Dominican. So I got a couple of things that I do out there. I'm, I'm very passionate, which uh, a friend of mine told me that that means that you're willing to suffer for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I try not to throw the I'm passionate about something lightly. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, they got the passion of the Christ. He was willing to suffer mm -hmm. for us. So every time I hear something, like, oh, my passion is this. I'm like, yeah, are you really willing to suffer for it? Right. You know? right. <laughs> so anyway, when, but, but my passion, not as heavy as that, but something that I'm very, um, what would be another substitute of passion? Now you have to help me with that. Uh, what would be? So, a passion is, I mean, it's just. Uh, yeah. yeah, something that I care about. Uh, it's it's like that. I feel like would uh, is changing a region or or improving uh, the quality of life of people. Yeah. You know, and I think that you do that by education. Impact. Mean, yeah, impact in a region, education, in jobs. I think yeah. I think handouts. There's a time and a place for that in times of crisis or something. But but you're not really gonna change somebody's life by just like giving them like two hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, and and those two hundred bucks are gonna go away, and then they're gonna come back and say, Hey, sir, can you give me some more? You know, so so then you create create a bad habit, right? You know, and you clip people's wings. When you take away the dignity of men or women making their own money by creating something by working, right. you are you are really like pushing down their their spirit. You're crushing. Uh -huh. You're crushing. You know. So we wanted to create jobs. So my first investment out there was a small avocado farm that nobody, very very few people know about this, and it's it's only about a thousand trees that we have. And next year is the first time that we have harvest. Oh wow! Is the has avocado that's like yeah, the small yeah, sure, one sure and we picked that because it travels really well it's got a very thick skin kind of like me <laughs> you know I got thick skin and uh so well uh, hopefully i'll be able to get a box and get you guys some avocados yeah, from our first yeah. run but uh one of my friends uh owns an engineering firm out there and we started building homes not in the touristic like sexy areas i think eventually we'll get there but that's not even what we wanted we want to just do like the average houses for the dominicans uh so we employ about 60 to 80 people right now and we're build, building houses left and right multifamily we have plans for right. um and so i went to dominican to play two concerts with my band yeah. <laughs> and i also went to see the new construction and to uh uh create a new company because now we're also getting offers to do some government contracts mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. to build like the public markets and things like that and uh i wanted to also do a video because i had an idea of like a lot of people that live in the U.S., they own land in the Dominican and they just have it there, kind of stagnant. And we're creating a way that they can bring their land and then we can develop it. Right. And then they, they can partner up with us and partner. reap the benefits uh, of right. the, you know, the net profits that right. we do out there. They can even keep a unit. They can continue to invest. So we're going to make it where like, hey, don't, don't just leave your land there. Like, let's improve it and let's go. Even if you want to keep it as a rental or you just want to use us as builders, okay. uh, we wanted to do that. So that's what I was doing out there. Yeah. And I, I love it. I, I flew in on Friday and then came back on a Wednesday and in and out. Yeah. yeah. And there's a whole philosophy I can see because you talk about it. You're like, you know, you're essentially saying that, you know, you're teaching people to fish rather than mm -hmm. just bringing them fish, uh, yes. you know, giving them something. So, and, and, but so you're employing 60, 80 people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's obviously a big thing. Yes. But then within that, uh, the profits, you're, you're, you're really just kind of pouring that back into because the idea is to do what with that? Talk about so that. So we want it. So I asked my friend, um, who lives there and is very connected uh, politically and, and is a really good person, does a lot of, lot of good work. I asked him, hey, do, do you know, you guys have trade schools here where people learn like trades, like carpentry and masonry. He's like, nope. I'm like, bingo. 
Right. So the you light know, went off. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start air from every uh, everything that we sell. We're gonna start setting up a big fund, and we're gonna start working on trade schools. You know, right. let's, let's just build things. You know, let's like, and then and then the, the same guys then they'll be able to get their their kids, and everybody can right. learn a trade. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, we have our own source of, of uh, people that are gonna be in the house, yeah. and we're also giving them the trades. You know, maybe we can make it worse free. You know, 100 yeah. percent where they don't have to pay, and we just support the the teachers and and the technology and the things that we need to do so that is really the end goal and that's really what we want to do with that company down there right um because I, again i believe that that's how you're going to really impact you know our and of course we're impact. getting to throw them a really cool christmas party that we do so <laughs> yeah you do, you do throw a mean christmas party i will say that yeah we, we, we like to party a lot right. like uh, you know um I want to touch on something because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 45 next year and uh, I've, I've worked a lot. It took me a decade and and a lot of a lot of my wife saying, hey, you got to take a day off. Like I, I wouldn't take days off. I would just work, 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 work. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're in real estate, you, even if I wasn't like working, but you're on. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about that. If the phone rings, you're going to grab that. Right. Mm-hmm. So it took me almost 10 day, 10 years where I'd say, you know what? Uh, I've sold over a thousand homes, and and we we own a lot of investment properties. Mm-hmm. You know, Airbnbs, Florida, here we're building in Mexico now too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm like, uh, I have people now. I like to delegate. I like to like grow people under mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. You know, so they can learn too. And I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna start taking Saturdays off. And uh, I made a post say, Hey, Michael Gomez is not gonna work on Saturdays. And guess what? First of all, most of my developers got really happy. Said, Hey. This is awesome. This is great. So, so it was like I even gained more respect when I you said, set a boundary. Yeah, yeah. I set a boundary. I said, I'm not going to work out. However, if you need me, here's Brenda's number. Here's Manuel's number. Here's right. Willie's number. So you're not alone. Like with the machine dust and stuff, because they take other days off. Yeah. Brenda takes Sundays. I don't take Sundays off. I go to church and I do football and real estate. But yeah. I am on on Sundays. Yeah. Because we have a lot of open houses sure. and everything like that. But, but the other day I was at a party and there was a lot of, Younger guys, kind of like my age, you know, mm-hmm. we were talking and, mm-hmm. and, and then suddenly the brag was different. Like, cause I used to brag of like, Hey, last week, man, I'll tell you what, I got so many deals going on. I worked so many hours mm-hmm. and I this and the brag was like how crazy my life was right. and how barely, barely didn't have any time for anything, right. you know? And now suddenly the brag was, Hey, we went, we, you know, we went with the family to 30A and we just chilled and, and, uh, and we did this and we did that. And, and everybody was in the same mindset. I'm like, guys. You guys realize what's happening now that the brag has changed. Yeah. Now, I don't think that you could bypass that type of hustle. You have uh, you have that that gap in your lifespan where you have to really grind it. Okay. Yeah. You don't get to brag about spending time now and taking all this day when you didn't like really grind it. That right. But it was awesome because some people stay there in that mode and sure. they don't transition to this part that I find myself now where I can actually enjoy the fruit of my labor. You can choose, you know, you can choose what you have choices now. I mean, and I think that's so huge. I mean, because I mean, your kids really, they're not going to know if you, you know, once you reach a certain amount of income, you know, people, your kids are not going to notice when they're older, like did, did, you know, if you made 25% less or 50% less, once you reach a certain level, what they're going to remember is that the time that they, that yeah. you spent with them. And so, so I came here with two hundred dollars in my pocket okay all my kids already have the upper hand yeah if i made it here they dropped me off in a country that wasn't my own with two hundred dollars in my pocket and i was able to figure it out whether it's by necessity or whatever my kids already have the upper hand mm-hmm. they already were born here they have parents that educate them i have my kid already reading financial books my 11 year old mm-hmm. i pay him when he finishes a book i give him an incentive mm-hmm. and he reads you know, and, uh, you know, he reads about economy and all this thing. So he's already, you know, you, I ask him what he wants to do. He says he thinks he wants to do real estate, but I don't care. Right. I want to I don't want to brag about my kids being a doctor or whatever. I want to brag about my kids happiness. Right. So my kid wants to move to Costa Rica and set up a surf shop out there. And my my baby girl wants to be a hairdresser or and, and that's where she finds happiness. And I, I, I don't get to brag about her being a, a scientist or whatever. Right. I am absolutely fine with that. Right, right. I'm not even going to do what my mom did i'm not even going to require a college degree on them right you know even though i could and i do think it's a good thing because we had that uh, a little bit of an argument online the other day a few of my peers where one of them was bragging hey look at me now and i don't have a college degree and a lot of people oh yeah heck yeah heck yeah yeah." and then i said well think about this though 
you have street smarts, which I had to too. Mm-hmm. Think think if you would be better if you had what you had and a college right. degree now right. on top of that. Right. So I'm not saying go get a college degree. I'm saying that if you have a college degree and you're so street smart, there's there's something good there, yeah. you know, because you can talk this language. You can go very high end and you can go get on two seconds too. Right. No matter what, right. you can right. relate to everybody at the right. same time, you know. Right. So here locally, um, you know, Hive Nashville, uh, everyone around here knows Hive. Uh, you've got a great team. Talk about that and where you guys are headed and what you're doing. You just, you had some milestones. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, this is, not, this is, so talk about that. It's your milestones. So excited. So I was at Compass before and Compass is a great company. Every real estate company that I work is company. They have their own thing going on. I had this vision and as I, as I stepped by faith into creating my own brokerage, mm-hmm. which I didn't create it to have like a ton of agents. We're, we're going to be 20 agents very, very soon. And we're not even a year old. Um, and we've sold over $115 million in real estate, which mm-hmm. for some teams here, that's a month, but for us, it's a big deal. Yeah. You know, for my agents, that is a big but you got a great team, quality, yeah, quality yeah. So, people. So, uh, and a great partner, Bill Lorick, which I told him, hey, one day I'll do a brokerage and I want you to come in and, mm-hmm. and help me with the agents. And he's very fatherly. And, mm-hmm. and But I wanted to create an agent, uh, a, a company that was very focused on agents come here and they learn about development, performance, how to work, uh, uh, with developers, how to work with investors, how to analyze deals, what's what's uh, infinite banking, mm. what's a HELOC, what's all these things that you normally don't learn. I want them to learn so that when they start making money, they know what they're going right. to do with the money. But I'm going to take it further. Lord willing, we're going to start a Hive uh, investment fund just mm. for agents. And they're going to be able to invest. And we're going to be able to, as, as agents, we're going to be able to buy real estate. You know, okay. And we're going to take it further. I am talking to Bill and we're trying to figure out how to make it at least 49% agent owned, you yeah. know? So, and, and there's only, you, you, you think this is crazy. There's only one brokerage in the U S that's agent owned and it's a brokerage called eight Z in like Arizona. Hmm. You know, I would reach out to them. I'm like, Hey, tell me more. I want to be able to do that. I want, I want, I want agents in hive that if they do 15 years over here, when they leave, they take more than the real estate license. Yeah. Okay. And they, they now they have they could be uh, owners and they have all this knowledge about real estate and how to become an investor. You know, so we're going to be focusing on those things and we want everybody to be an influencer. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing. Everybody needs to hire a millennial. And I'll say it again for the people in the back. Yeah. Everybody, every company needs to hire a millennial. I have I have Manuel, who's my operations manager. One day he came and said, "Hey, you know what? In five years or less." If you're not putting out all this content, if you're not an influencer in whatever thing that you're doing, you're not going to matter. So I said, what? It's like, yeah, you're not going to matter. You need to be an influencer. I don't care if you post a video, only two people see it right now. Put out good content and put it out really good. And I was like, man, that is gold. So we're going to train every agent to also be an influencer wherever they they are. We're going to give them the tools. This is the gear that you need. This is how you set up your home studio. I'll even go to their houses if I need to go and say, hey, this is what you do. You don't know what to talk about? Call me. Right. I'll give you 15 ideas on what you can share about. Sure. Oh, you, yeah, I was talking to a, a gentleman that might become to might become an agent in Hive, and he works at a restaurant. I said, hey, you know what you, you can talk about? And this is as we're having lunch. I said, and I, I told him, I don't even care if you come to Hive, but you should be doing this. I'm sharing all these things right. with him. I said, you know, you should talk about how you're an agent and you still have a second job. You know how many mm. people will relate to you right. and, and, and how you use your second job to actually network and, and get leads. And even though you could all just be doing real estate right now, you're still going to keep that job as, as long as you can. And that is absolutely okay. And you still treat your, 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 your clients, even though you have many, like they're all your only client. Yeah. You can do that. I had two jobs. I was a full-time musician. Right. And in 2017, I sold 71 homes from the back of that tour bus. So Imagine. don't tell me that you cannot play 150 shows and play and, and sell 71 homes. Wow. You can do it. All you need is leverage. You leverage with people. You find the right people. Anyways, that's that's the direction where Hive is going. We want to be somewhat agent-owned. We want to be very heavy into... You know, and then the last thing is we do want to... I had a dream to be able to function as a team, even Mm -hmm. though we're a brokerage. So we are going to be doing lead generating and we want to be able to pass out leads to the agents that want them. Right. You know, because if there's slow slow months out there and I want to be able to get to the point that, hey, if your regular business is kind of slow, hey, yeah, you're going to have to give me 50% of that lead. That's normal. Like, mm-hmm. like any team, right. but, but 
hey, you got business. You right. got. I don't want anybody just like, oh man, it's so slow. So we're going to be working really hard on those things. And that's huge for for somebody that's coming in that's new because I think it's that's the fear, right? For a lot of you know, they're coming from another industry. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they want to try dip their toe in it or, you know, do it part time, not leave their job, but it's the lead flow. And so yeah. what I hear you saying is, is you're going to create ways to get That's these. Right. Yeah, the when leads. I solve so, that, it's like yeah. the biggest problem when you're a new agent is who do I buy or sell real estate to? Listen, not even your aunt wants to use you. Let's face it. You don't even know how to fill out a purchase and sale agreement. Yeah, You don't. You get out of real estate school, you're as green as they come. Right. You know, so it's like by having your brokerage like provide. You know, like, yeah, hey, here's somebody already, you know, we pre screen them. We have an ICA in-house. They're pre-qualified. All you need to do is, like, hustle it real hard, take care of that client. Like, it's, like, the only client that you have. Pick up the phone. For the love of the Lord, pick up the phone. Right. Text right back. Right. Even if you say, hey, I can't I can't talk to you right now. I'll text right. you. Text, you know, right. people, people will, like, write you off immediately. Like, if that... You text, you call, nobody calls you. You, yeah. you know what? I sent you a client yesterday. Yeah, yeah. What did I tell you? What did the other lender do or did not do? Right. Communicate. Right. like, hey, she says, by the way, that the old lender was very hard communicating. Right. Why? You know, I bet that lender right now is probably complaining how the year has been slow mm-hmm. and yada, yada. Right, right, right. But are you even communicating to your clients, right. you know? Right. So it's just it's blocking and tackling is what they say. You know, it's just the simplest, simplest form is just doing the basics a lot of times, but doing them over and over and over. And that's how you get great, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's You don't have to be, the you know, the greatest at something, You could, but you can get great. You can become great by doing the small things over and over. That's what I see with you, man. You just, you get in there, you learn, you figure it out and, you know, you put in the work and surround yourself with great people. You got a great team. How do people reach out to you uh, or connect with you if they want to work with you? Yes. Uh, you've got, um, you know, a, a, a magnetic personality. And oh, thank you. And, and a beautiful face. And a beautiful face. At least my wife thinks so. <laughs> so I, I, I tell, I tell my wife, I'm like, Hey, Hey, watch out now. I am the sum of all your prayers. And it comes to like a husband. At the end of the day, you get to wake up next Na- to this, right? Na- she is and a beautiful she, lady. She too. just like goes like this. <laughs> she's she's wonderful. And a beautiful lady too. She's yeah, great. Yeah. She's awesome. So um how do they reach yeah, you? How do they reach you? Yeah. So uh social media, of course, uh Michael Gomez Broker, uh on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, mm-hmm. um 615-613-4469. Mm-hmm. I because I, I I was teaching my kids my phone number and i sing it to them because they're 615-613-4461 and then they sing it back to me and then they remember my, when they were little they yeah. remember my my number Love like that. that so uh you can reach me we're not really recruiting we normally don't recruit we don't call anybody hey come come to a brokerage we want to just be able to we, we have actually told a, a few people that hey we're probably not a good fit yeah. And I'm going to give you a really good example if we have time. Yeah, yeah. You're all good. The other day, an agent uh, called me. He was a new agent. I uh, was moving from Seattle. And... Uh, and, and and I don't I don't care if he hears this because there's nothing wrong. But but he called me. He was a home inspector in Seattle. He said, "Hey, mm-hmm. hey yeah, I got your number. You know, I want to see what you got going there. I'm looking for a place to hang my license." Immediately, I'm like, hmm. "Turn off." I'm like, "No, this is not turn off." I, I'm like, "Cause I'm I'm no, normally when I encounter somebody, like I start thinking about." him like what can i bring to mm-hmm. you whether this works out or not what can i bring to you and so well, well, t- well t- tell me more it's like yeah you know you know i want to be an agent and i'm looking for a place to have my license and you know i heard you're great and i was like well you, everything you heard is, is true i am <laughs> i'm <am> great <laughs> but but then he said it's like yeah i just i just don't know how much i want to do and i said well listen this is what i'm going to tell you first of all we're not really set up for new agents mm-hmm. we're, we're not you know honestly yeah. like i i tell people i'm not here to teach you how to buy or sell a house um so if you come it's better if you come with somebody that you can be a little under. bit of experience yeah because I, we're, we're not set up for it there's a lot of liability as a broker you right. know and i don't have the time to like be like hey hey what are you what are you doing hey hey listen your inspection period is about to expire are you on it i have an admin that will do that but i don't don't personally have the time for that right. so so i told them listen you should go to X, xy brokerage because they are really good for for new agents yeah. but i told them but listen but but you don't want to go there and say that you just want a place to hang your license. I tell you what you want to do. You want to go there and you want to say, hey, 
I'm looking for the agent, the lady or the guy who's the busiest here in this office. Who is it? What's their name? I want to go talk to them. Yeah. And you want to go talk to them and you want to go say, hey, my name's so-and-so. And I'm here, a new agent, and I'm going to work harder than anybody else right. over here. Give me one of those leads and I'll show you what I can do. Right. And I told him, if you are not coming in with that mentality, maybe you just want to stay a, or be right. a really good home inspector. Right. Right. And you know what he did? He thanked me. He said, thank you. I That's say, hey, keep me posted. Go do a year yeah. there if you want to yeah. come back, but but do not go. Just just this is real estate is not for the faint of heart. You you're not gonna. The mindset need, has to be there. I mean, you know. You can go in it saying, I just need a place to have my license, but that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to go and then you're going to waste money. Yeah. Tom, you know, we don't have monthly fees at Hive either because let's listen, I was a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it, they're slow months. Yeah. I don't care how good you are. I had, uh, I had two slow months. Uh, the past two months were slow for me. I still had closings because my agents and all this stuff. And today is a really good day. I but got your personal business. Yeah. Yeah. So it was slow. I had slow months. Everybody has slow, slow months, yeah. and then and then if you're if you have slow months and you still got to be paying all, all these like monthly fees, I didn't want to be that guy. That's like hey yeah. pay 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 like you know. So our business model is just like hey you make money we make money, yeah. and hopefully you get all this all this uh, information and you learn all these things and you have the confidence to be able to work with investors now because mm -hmm. you speak their language you know what a cap rate is you know how to build a performa with realistic numbers mm -hmm. you already found out what the taxes are gonna be you know you know what I get performa sometimes with and, and when you read the tax it is that they they got the tax amount of the property when it was bought three years ago uh, yeah. that amount will change right the moment you you close three hundred thousand sure. dollars more it takes like two minutes if you don't know how to figure out call a title company email right. one of the the title company that you work with say hey sales price this county this can you tell me how much the taxes are going to be for you oh they're going to be five hundred two thousand two hundred whatever now you have now real you numbers know. you know so it's like i did I, this guy is not going to sell a property to to one of my clients that is not going to cash flow yeah. i'll be the first one to say no this is not going to work out like yeah. or the cleaning fee wasn't there yeah <laughs> sounds familiar yeah. <laughs> the cleaning fee wasn't there and now they counted that as income so this doesn't make sense now <laughs> but you're like but what i did what i know about you man is that you want people everybody to win so when you when you come into contact with people um, you want them to win. Yeah. So you wanted a win, win. You want to, even with that guy, you mm -hmm. know, that, you know, you wanted, you, you provided him value and, and, and he, he went away from that phone call, uh, you know, a better person. Absolutely. And, and probably concerned. It's like, Oh, do I really want to do this? And I wanted him to think about that. I want yeah. everybody before and he may come back he, or he may go like, he may still come back to the industry. I he mean, he may become a multi million dollar yeah. producer, or he might just still be the guy that go hands his license because yeah. you don't know. But at least I did my part. My right. part is I had an encounter with this gentleman via phone yep. and I want him, I wanted to use that time for him to yeah. hopefully take something positive that he can use to potentially improve or even change his life. And I try to do that everywhere I go, whatever I, be. I mean, we met. Yeah, that's your and heart. And like, hey, tell me, tell me, what is it that you do? Oh, HELOC, man, really, you're, you're like an authority on it. Come on, man, let's go. Right. Come come talk to my agents. My agents like, yeah. have heard about it, but it's still mm -hmm. kind of a myth. Yeah. And then you came and everybody was just like, and then and then you offer a one-on-one -on -one and and maybe, I don't even know if nobody has yeah, done right. it. So, I'm, so it's just like, you still have to like, some will take it right. and some won't. Right. And, and there's no like, uh, why, how's just the pain you're, you're uh, the spirit of, of hustle, your drive that you have in there. I, have, I happen to be very driven, not greedy. I would say driven, never yeah. greedy. Right. You know, it's one of my things is that, you know, can't confuse both. Like I'll go, I'll go and go, but it's like, sometimes the best thing for people is to go somewhere else. Right. Even clients of mine, I've clients, I've sent people them loose. Every now and then I'm like, hey, listen, I'm not the best at that. Not a good fit. Or that area, I don't I don't serve it really well. Right. I don't know, like Gatlinburg, could I be selling stuff in Gatlinburg? Yeah. I know how to analyze deals there and I know how to call somebody and say, hey, I'll give you 50%. But I got two agents of mine that really crush it over there. You know what I do? Send it to them. Hey, listen, I got two guys, they take care of it. And they, yeah, they give me 25% referral. I don't make 50, I don't make 75, who cares? Right. Man, I know that they're going to take really good care of that client and then, then they're going to buy it. And then literally, it took me like two minutes to make the connection referral fee. And then mm -hmm. I made, I think I got $7,000 the other day from one mm -hmm. of those referrals. Right. Time that I worked, two minutes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have that really a relationship that I built through the years with that particular client. Yeah. But what, what am I going to do? And then my agent made like 25. So they, <laughs> they won. I won. The client got an amazing property that cash flows. 
who's who's unhappy there? No, right. but it's right. good. Right. That's what it's all about, man. <laughs> Everybody awesome. wins. And, and uh, you know, we were talking about uh, we we're talking about the Godfather too. You know, mm-hmm. and those guys, you know, Hyman Roth, he wanted everybody to win. You know, he was, he wanted, and so it, it, not that you're a gangster. No, but but fun <laughs> fact, this and this is hilarious. My father was reading the Godfather novel, and he said, Michael Corleone. Let's name my son Michael. So my father named me after Michael Corleone I didn't from the that. Godfather. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. That's, I love that. I love that. Fredo, I know it was you, Fredo. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I, know Miguel you. I know it was you. So, so well, man, thanks for coming. I mean, yeah, uh, we I could. I know you and I could talk for hours, and, hours. and it was we fun. Talk for hours. Before. It was fun hanging at the uh, the beach together, and uh, we're gonna do more of that. And so yes. get down to 30A, and and it's amazing. So many people just don't even know mm-hmm. like about 30A. They go down, they have no idea. Yeah, it's where, crazy. where, it's where? Like and then you get there, world. it's like, what holy the world. It's like, it's like yeah, Beverly it. Hills and we should on the combine, beach. Cause I can use my property out there and a couple and we can, we can get 10, 20 people, you know, yeah. and do something really yeah. cool down there. Love it. Uh, but I do want to say goodbye with this one thing. Yes. Um, one day you and I, and everybody that works really hard, we're going to look at our phones and we're going to see, you know, our online banking and we're going to see maybe some crypto if that thing is even a thing. Mm-hmm. And you know what? There's going to be money there. Yeah. And then that day, we're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. Because we're all terminal. Right. It's just the when and the how. So it's like, I, you know, that scripture that says, you know, teach me to number my days and count every moment. You know, I literally live by that. Like maybe that's why sometimes I'm like could be intense and all this stuff because it's just like you never know. You just never know. You know, my father was 33 years old when he mm. passed away from cancer. Mm. I already outlived the old man mm. by m- over a decade. You know, he was a young guy, full of life, with a wife and three little kids. Yeah. So it's like, and you got three kids. Yeah. You're like, so you're so like, I'm like, you know, why are you gonna go out stressing? Why are you gonna go out taking advantage of people? Why are you gonna go out just there living life like? like you know doing things that you shouldn't be doing so it's like you know everybody that's grinding out that grind but but enjoy life you know yeah. you know kiss your wife intensively to yeah. go out on dates like go have fun go go vacation a lot do whatever you you know think take a day off for the level of the yeah, world you know yeah. what i mean take it off nothing's gonna happen the world will not change you know if you don't just take a day off i don't to unplug you know what i do on saturdays i go take get a haircut i wash my car i go to lifetime and work out a little bit and i hang out with the kids the wife is so awesome yeah. to have a day off of it, you know. Well, I'm glad for you, bro, that you're that you're <laughs> taking time for yourself these last few years. And um, you know, it is true. I mean, you've you've got to take time for yourself. I mean, it's what is if you're not inspired by that, guys. I mean, I, I felt just right then, you know, I, like just, Convic- convicted. Yeah, no, I mean, like I just inspired just to go day off. And, That's and, it. And, yeah, take a day off or just you know, live like tomorrow may not come. This well, afternoon the, may not come. There's a fear. Guys like us are so driven. The fear is sometimes like, well, what the heck am I going to do on a day off? Literally, I have yeah. I have friends of mine that they're like, if I take a day off, I'm just going to get bored to this because we find so much joy in our work and what yeah. we do because there's that so much purpose almost, in what we do. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, what do you do? Believe me, you start thinking, man, man, I'm terrible at golf, but I would love to go golfing. Yeah. I love fishing. Ask me last time I went yeah. fishing. I haven't gone fishing in like a year or two, you know? So there's things that we start we start thinking. You're not your work is what yeah, we're saying. You're not, we're, we're not, and, and men, I think it's so easy to get into that where your identity is all wrapped up in your work and we're not our work. We're more no, than that. Absolutely. But it's so easy to get into it. Yeah, but, well, anyways, thank you so much. Yeah, man. I, uh, like I said, I'm a big fan. Thank you. I, I get so thank much uh, wisdom and all the things that you share. Oh, so brother, you're the best. Enjoy being So li- li- like and subscribe, guys. Hit the like and subscribe uh, and the little bell. And uh, reach out to Michael and his team one more time at Michael Gomez. Michael Gomez Broker. Mo- Michael um, Gomez Broker. He, or HiveNashville.com. Hive Michael, Gro- Michael Gomez Broker.com is my website. I mean, you find it. You find me. Cool. In now, there's a photographer named Michael Gomez here in town. And I keep telling him that this town is not big enough for the two of us. And he, I'm kidding, he's a good friend of mine. Yeah. And like the other day, not the other day, but like two years ago, I, I I walked into this place thinking I was going to a listing presentation. I went to this like dojo in Franklin. And when I get there, they got, cause the guy called me on the phone. It's like, oh, Michael Gomez, when are you gonna come and whatever. So I, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll go there this afternoon. Right? So I get there and the guy was expecting me to shoot like the oh, place. No. And I'm like, hey sir, I think you were looking to- I wear a lot of hats, but that's the, what the other Michael 
Michael Gomez, who is, uh, uh, you know, a little bit older and not as handsome as I am, <laughs> but still, still pretty good looking guy. So uh, Michael Gomez, if you're seeing this, uh, I love you, my bro. And we do have to hang out. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Guys, thanks again. This wraps us up. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next time around on the All In Podcast. Let's go. Cool.